with, um, with RIPTA. The, the larger question looking forward is who's gonna run this agency? Scott Avedesian was a political appointee, as a lot have been in the past. Gina Raimondo appointed him. I don't know how much he really knew about transit. My question is, who are you gonna get to come to an agency like RIPTA that's been so besieged with problems over the years? That's a great question, and I think RIPTA has really been handicapped with in terms of trying to create a more robust uh, uh, supply of tr public transit across the state due to funding issues. But it's interesting to note how people who have criticized RIPTA in the past, like Senate President Dominic Ruggiero and the transit advocates who are most passionate in their advocacy are kind of singing from the same hymnal now in saying that it should be a transit professional rather than a political appointee who is hired to lead RIPTA into the future. You know, perhaps there can be some coming together in the state in deciding whether, uh, I don't think RIPTA is going to be a huge profit center for the state, but transportation is important. It's always very ironic that in a small state like Rhode Island, it's such a struggle to have good public transit. So maybe there can be a meeting of the minds about the mission and adequate funding for RIPTA, but right now that funding is kind of elusive. Yeah, and for me, I don't know whether the timing is bad or good, right? Because um, looking for a CEO, as we've know from other departments heads, you know, having vacancy, I'm a little concerned that that vacancy might last longer than we need it to. And then also with the challenges we have to have, it's facing a deficit right now. Um, drivers, you know, we don't have enough wages for drivers, so we have a driver shortage problem, and then we're threatening to cut services. So it's not an attractive job um, posting for anyone to come in. Any other to make that happen and make that happen quickly, um, the administration and legislative need to put some investments in RIPTA than they have in the last couple of years. It's kind of a death spiral, though, because I understand they have a shortage of drivers and maybe a, um, a deficit, but if you start cutting routes, then what happens, exactly. right? Exactly. Billy? Well, it's, yeah, $8 million deficit. And I mean, the timing couldn't be worse, I think, for the governor itself. I mean, this is, goes back to what we were talking about with Alvidi and transparency on the DOT. Uh, yeah, he didn't leave with a fight, and maybe because he's probably wants to get out of Ripter now. <laughs> <and> That's <laughs> a great time problem. to go, So right? it may have been a good opportunity for him to leave this for, you know, the government to figure it out without him having to be there. Um, but I think we also, again, I the if the administration and legislature use this as an opportunity to really talk about the problems RIPTA have been facing. We have a transit master plan um, that we can be implementing, right? So having a new, fresh, bold perspective come in and talk about how can we expand services so we have more frequent, longer um, service hours, um, add more routes um, to what we have now, this could be an opportunity for us to have that world-class transit um, system we've been talking about for years. You know, I think we need to have the discussion also about people say RIPTA loses money, it's always in a deficit. Well, is it going to be a loss leader? Look at how much we spend on the convention center. Mm -hmm. it, it is, you know, and that doesn't get talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. So are we going to chronically run a deficit and know this is a service you need to have in a community if you're going to have a vibrant community and people who don't want to get around in cars? Or are you going to say, no, it's not going to work in Rhode Island, you pull the plug? I don't think you're going to do it all together, but isn't that the philosophical discussion we I, need to have? I, I believe 100%. And I mean, as you know, there's no such thing as a free uh, transit system, but if you know, it should be free for riders for everyone. I think you know we, we spend so much money on stupid things and uh, in the state, and you know a, a, a transit system would solve a lot of problems in the outside of the community. Um, you know, look at how much money we wasted on the ferry system temporarily up into uh, from uh, Bristol to Providence, and you know the counts right now show that the buses traveling uh, from the East Bay over the bridge are, have chronically low ridership, and that not a lot of people are taking advantage of them. Uh, so if we're going to have the system and we're going to invest in it, we should make it. So it's more robust. Uh, we should probably combine it with some of this medical transport. We're spending a lot of money on that. That was really the point of contention prior to the pandemic. Uh, combine those pools of resources together and focus on a unified transportation system, I think would be you know, a better use of our funds.